Hi, this is Don McKenzie with Great Commission Church, and I want to welcome you to a study that has uh, been helpful to me. I want to share it with you on the prayer of Paul in Ephesians chapter one. This is part one, about seven minutes. All right, let's just take a look at uh, this prayer. It starts in verse 15, where he says, therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, he's writing to the Christians at the Ephesian church. He says, as a result of that, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you, and then I'm going to stop right there in the middle of the verse, and I want to notice the logical order that Paul is using here. Now, the first thing to notice is that Paul heard of their faith in the Lord Jesus and their love for all the saints. Secondly, this caused him then to give thanks to God for them. Thirdly, he then began to make mention of them in his prayers. He's now praying for them. And he's praying that God may give them something. All right. He heard about them. And this caused him then to thank God upwardly for them. And then he began to pray for them to God, that God may give them something. All right, the big question is, what does Paul want God to give to these Ephesian Christians? Well, the answer is the rest of the prayer in the second half of verse 17 up through verse 19. And we'll look at that later. But first, what I'd like to do is notice five steps to this prayer process. First, you have to have a willing giver. And Paul addressed his prayer to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. So he believed that God was willing to hear his prayer and answer it. Secondly, you need to be a thankful worshiper. Paul did not cease to give thanks for these Ephesian Christians. So in his heart, he was moved to give great thanks to God for them. Thirdly, you need a serious asker. So Paul says, I made mention of you in my prayer. So Paul is serious, he's diligent, he's earnest in praying for these Ephesian Christians. And fourthly, you need a desirable gift. Now, we're going to see what Paul asked God to give to these Ephesians in the rest of verse 17, all the way through verse 19. But if it's not desirable, if it's not something that would motivate Paul to pray for and the Ephesian Christians to yearn for, then probably none of this happens. It's got to be a great gift. And that's why when you're uh, talking to God, you need to ask him for a desirable gift. And then lastly, you need to be a humble recipient. So Paul was praying for them. And if they received what he prayed for, they would know they did not earn or deserve this, but God gave it to them, and that would make them humble recipients. All right, let's now ask this question. Why did Paul think God would answer his prayer for these Ephesian Christians? Because it seems he believed that God would answer this prayer. Well, the answer is in verses 15 and 16. So let's zoom in on these verses. All right, have you ever heard the saying, you thank the responsible party. What did Paul thank God for in these verses? He was thanking God. He didn't cease to give thanks to God. What was he thanking God for? Well, he was thanking them, thanking God for the faith of the Ephesians and their love for all the saints. Where does Paul believe the Ephesians got their faith in Jesus and their love for other believers? Well, Paul clearly and unashamedly thanks the responsible party, God. He didn't thank the Ephesians for their faith and love. He thanked God for their faith and love. Paul believed that God gave the Ephesians these gifts of faith and love. And as a result, Paul is deeply moved by the grace of God in saving these people and changing 
these people. So he worships God with thanksgiving. So here's the point. Paul was not asking God to start a work in them, but to continue and complete his saving work in these believers. Look at Philippians 1.6. Paul wrote, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So Paul was really confident that if God had begun a good work, he would complete it. And he believed that God had begun a good work in these Ephesian Christians. All right, this is why Paul was so bold and regular and asking God to give these Christians something more, something more than they had already experienced with God, because it was clear to him that the Lord had already started something. He'd given them salvation and a measure of sanctification. God was at work in their lives, and Paul knew there was more they needed. So before we look at the what Paul asked God to give these Jesus-believing, saint-loving Christians, let's ask why Paul felt a sense of urgency in praying for these Christians. If God is at work and will complete his work in them, why pray? We're going to look at uh, why Paul prayed and what he prayed in our next lesson. So thanks for watching part one, and I hope you'll tune in to part two.